we maximize uh, that ratio? The second one is focus on company values. And I'll, I'll return to this again and again and again in the, in the conversation about the process. If your company values and, and your, your approach to building a company is one of high achieving, sort of brilliant people, okay, they're jerks, but so what? They're brilliant people. Uh, your hiring process is going to be radically different to a person, to, to a company that values collaboration above individual buildings. Uh, if you're customer centric versus technology driven, uh, all of those are valid ways to build a company. Um, but figuring out what those core values are is, is likely to shape this uh, quite, quite a bit. Uh, so uh, for us um, at Adurio, the core value is, is transparency and openness. So we are uh, everything from our salary policy to uh, how we talk about our hiring process uh, to, to potentially potential candidates. Uh, everything is out in the open. So that is that is going to be driving the process that I described later on. The next step, uh, so third out of fourth, um, hiring is a wicked problem. Uh, the, the term wicked problem or wicked learning environments, how many of you have heard that before? Excellent. Um, so, uh, so wicked problems. Wicked problems are problems uh, where there are many right answers. Feedback is either non-existent or delayed. And every problem is high stakes. So it's a problem where you do something and in a year's time, you still don't know whether you're right or not. And hiring is, is, is a perfect definition of that. So you, 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 you make a choice, and here from now, you, 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 don't, you don't know what's happening. Uh, you might see really, really bad choices, you might see excellent choices, but your definition of what good is, is also sort of quite, um, uh, quite uh, dodgy. On the other side, there's, there's kind problems. Kind problems are quick feedback, uh, low stakes, you can do a lot of them, see, see whether you're right or wrong, there's, there's some, some sort of a learning mechanism. And the beautiful, the beautiful difference between wicked and kind problems is you get better at kind problems by doing them again and again. So if you play a chess game, uh, you see, okay, this was wrong, I can learn. From that. With wicked problems, you do not get better by doing it again and again. So you can be garbage at hiring and spend seven years on it and still be garbage at hiring. Um, and that's, that's, the, that's the beauty of, uh, of hiring and everything uh, in a startup, mostly. Uh, but every step of the hiring process is much more kind. So you can be, get better at designing tasks because you get some feedback, okay, this task didn't give me any useful questions to ask the candidate. You can be better at asking interview questions, you can be better at any step at, at along the way and, and improve that way. So hiring super wicked, each step, don't worry about what you uh, so, so, and that's why that's why this is what I'll be focusing on uh, in the rest of this talk. This is our hiring process. So there's a lot of steps. And again, this is the beginning of you being received an application. And this ends with uh, this ends with uh, with uh, a decision making at the end uh, of all of that process. And I'll go, go through every one of these steps one by one. What the, explaining what that, what that means, why we do it, who in the company does it, and for you uh, on the other side, for you looking for a job, I'll be describing what exactly are the things that we are looking for in the hiring process every step of the way. Uh, before we jump in, uh, any, any, any immediate questions, anything to note at this point? 
is that, is that the order you're doing it? That is absolutely the order. Okay. Um, so that is that is the order uh, that we that we do that. So excellent. Let's start with number one. We received typically an email from a candidate. Sometimes we know the candidate before we talk to them. Uh, sometimes we know them really well, so we will skip this. It's this is this is sort of riddled with exceptions. This is riddled with exceptions. Uh, so, and this is this is something that we were doing every step of the way. So currently, in Rio is we've got thirty-three uh, team members. Uh, three more joining September, and we're firing for eight more. Uh, and, and we've had quite quite a few leaders uh, as well along the way. Uh, so application screening is inevitable. You just do it. If you receive an application, this is this is this is something that's almost you know, from day one. This is this is this is useful. Um, so what, why do we do that? I think that's uh, that's obvious. So we focus on giving immediate no thank yous here. So application isn't about Assessing the quality of the candidate is just okay. Who uh, who do we not want to speak with uh, at this stage? And that's uh, generally we set some criteria. Um, we grade each applicant. We sense check the grades, and then we email the applicant. Um, so the criteria might be previous experience broadly in line of what we what we want. Uh, English acceptable. Mm -hmm. um, that those that, that that's, that's, that's the level of, of, of information we are operating here. And again, the goal is not to find the super super cool candidates here. Uh, the goal here is figuring out uh, who is um, who is worth having the first conversation to. So you you're, you're saving your time in the future. By, by 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 eliminating clear notes. And so what performs well here? Clarity. So if we need to get our head around why are you reaching out to us about this position with with, with that document attached. Uh, and if if there's no clarity and if you haven't clearly explained so why your job experience why your previous experience is linked with the job we might not pick it up, and we might say no, thank you. Um, not for this, not for this position. Uh, and uh, on the on the right, uh, we'll be we'll be uh, sharing. Uh, there's there's always a master spreadsheet. We we love, we haven't introduced an African tracking system yet. Uh, we're uh, we're doing that now, but we have a master spreadsheet for each hiring process. This is tab one summary, where we assign grades on, on different things. In this case, it's work experience, education, English. Uh, there's a total, and there's the status bar there. Uh, candidate email phone, I've deleted for obvious reasons. So you've selected this, uh, a, a, a set of candidates. You then move to the first conversation. And the first conversation is typically 15 to 30 minutes long. And you want, and here you, you want to do that first, this is the first big filter of candidates. So you want to do introductions, clarifications, um, and you want to, again, save time in the future. As you recall, the next bit is the task. The task requires a lot of time from the candidate. It requires a lot of time from you because you will be going through those tasks and you will be providing feedback to the candidate. Uh, so, so this is the case. In the first conversation, you want to make sure the tasks go out to people who are qualified uh, to do the job you demanded in your head that they should do when they join your team. So we arrange a time. We this, this isn't a policy, but we generally start with candidates' questions, uh, in, in, in this case. So you, you ask if the candidate has any questions, and you figure out whether they've understood what the position is, what their misconceptions are, etc. So you answer the candidates' questions, 
you explain the position again, and, and this, is, this is really, really key. Both you and the candidate have to feel incredibly secure at this point that, yeah, the task is worth doing. It's worth investing about three, four hours in the candidate's time, and slightly less of a significant amount of your own time uh, for, uh, for the task. So you, you are you are asking about their rationale uh, for, 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 for applying, you are figuring out the key points in their job experience. So it's an intense 15, 15 30 minutes uh, that's typically done by the team lead. The team lead is, is, is the one doing that. And of course, historically, when you're a team of three, everything's done by the founders, then you'll, you'll start uh, delegating to, to team leads. And as you saw, application screening is something that the team lead doesn't do uh, at all with, with, with the career. So we now have an operations team doing the first level of screening and team leads doing most of the rest of the hiring. But that will change company to company and as the company grows. Um, finally, uh, really, really uh, two, two points here. You want to explain the rest of the process to the candidate. Uh, so if you have a strict process, you, you go, okay, this is the commitment, this is the journey you're on, these are the steps, evaluate this and, and evaluate it well. And you want to uh, you want to give a decision if that decision is obvious to you at that point. Uh, again, so it's it's a, it's a really awkward uh, way to end the conversation, but I find it better than oh we'll we'll let you know. Uh, very okay, thanks. This doesn't seem uh, to be a good fit for the following reasons. Uh, let's part ways here. It's awkward, but it saves you time for for writing an email later and. Again, openness is, is, is a value that will find its way everywhere in, in these, uh, in these uh, slides. Uh, what performs well on the candidate side? A good narrative. So, why do you want to join the company? So, really wanting to join the company uh, is, 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 is really, really helpful. Uh, so, a bit of excitement. Uh, so, that's uh, that's a huge boost. Uh, so if a person is demonstrating that they found they're passionate about the same things you're doing, especially if you're very early in your startup journey, it's likely that that role will change, the skill set will be entirely different, and the skill set will be entirely different. So initially you, you want people who will just who are passionate about what you're doing in your company and are willing to adapt uh, along with your company as you as you as you just change uh, as you change inevitably. So that's the first conversation you had. You put down the phone. You make a decision. This person gets the task. This person. These people have got a no thank you. Uh, and then you move to the task. Yes. Sir. Approximate ratio of how many people pass this say so just understand whether it's like a main filter that just takes out like the biggest brains or, or uh, is it something that actually where a few people get that? Ideally, this is a few. This yeah, so CV screening uh, plus uh, the first call. Typically, we see about one third passing through, maybe less. Uh, depends on the position, very much depends on the position and, and how well we communicate about it uh, and what channels we've used to advertise. Uh, so, for customer success support positions where we advertise on CV, where we advertise on CV online, you get a lot of people who haven't read this just dropping applications everywhere. So, quite a few. Uh, get dropped in the CV screen, quite a few get, get dropped here. Uh, but again, you want a short list. So if you are asking the candidate to do that investment of, of a task, you want to make sure that, yeah, they're, they're, they're up there. They're up there. Excuse me, so yeah. how many would you, would you have for, uh, to get a task um, per, per position? I, uh, I looked at this one. This is, this is customer success hiring uh, from 
earlier in the year. Um, this was six, seven people uh, 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 in, the, in, the, in the end. Uh, there are. was six seven out of twenty or thirty something. I'll, I'll, I'll check the spreadsheet. Uh, I'll check the spreadsheet afterwards and give you a precise uh, ratio. Um, sometimes it's just one or two. Sometimes it's just one or two that that, that, that get the task. Um, uh, yeah, so to summarize you give tasks based on you are quite sure that if like everything goes good beyond this then like we're gonna hire it. Yeah you you've seen some strengths and you've seen no major red flags. Um, um, How about the major red flags? Do you get a little bit later? Uh, yeah, I, I can. I, I, uh, we, 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 get, we pick up more on those in the interviews, but in the first one, we say, actually, let's, let's, let's do it now. Let's do a little detour in the, in the major red flags. Um, major red flags is absolute lack of enthusiasm. So people, people hate. We have people explicitly saying, I don't know what, why I wrote to you, I, I just had the headhunter approaching us. Um, yeah, I suppose it's worth checking out. We go, okay. Uh, <laughs> really, brilliant. Uh, uh, that's, that's not gonna work. Uh, that's not gonna work. Uh, so uh, so that's, 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 that's definitely, definitely a key one. Um, in the conversation, uh, Inability to explain things in, 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 in the career trajectory. So you're a PhD and you're applying for entry level junior day analyst. What's going on there? Uh, and that might be a, a sort of reasonable move uh, for, for somebody. Somebody's looking for something light to touch, uh, somebody's returning from maternity paternity leave. Uh, there's, there's all sorts of, of, of different reasons. If you explain that, uh, but if there's if there's if there's weird career uh, trajectories, if people in those 15, 30 minutes manage to be sexist or racist, uh, has happened. Uh, so so there's there's there's, there's uh, um, we have, we don't have a definitive list, uh, but they feel really bad. Uh, <laughs> they they feel quite quite bad. Uh, excellent. Um, so this is this is what everything. This is one of those sort of key pillars around which most things are built. You want to see the candidate in practice, doing work that's as close as the work they should, they will be doing if you hire them. Uh, you want to effectively simulate uh, their their work uh, in three four hour jobs. Uh, we, we've opted for three, four hours as the, as the ideal time spent by the candidates. Quite a few of our candidates spend more. Uh, that's, that's there, but it should be doable in three, four hours. Uh, and that commitment should be communicated up front. So if you, if you go ahead, this is, this is there. It's likely that you will not be selected, but it should be. Um, uh, it, yeah, it should be just, you should be open about that. And another reason, why it's similar to practice is clarify candidate's expectations. So if the candidate is given a task that doesn't match what they will be doing in the role, you're setting yourself up for a, a, a sad parting of ways six months down the line. So if you have a super technical um, uh, development task that's, that's focused on machine learning, and you will not do any machine learning in the next three years. Uh, brilliant. <laughs> no, no. Uh, there's, there's, there's no point in checking for something that they would not do. And we do this for all positions. So every single position that we hire has had a task from the office manager uh, to development team, designers, product folks, sales folks, marketing folks, everyone who gets a task designed for them. Um, and final, final, the final bit of why, the middle bit of why is to provide interesting questions. Because if they've done a task, if they've gone through the first notice, you expect them to do the task well. And that means you will have a conversation about the task with them. 
So this, is, this isn't something that you mark correct, incorrect. This is something, you're, you're effectively laying the foundations of a super cool interview in the next stage. Uh, that's, that's the key thing that, that a task should provide. And again, you first define the criteria. Uh, you start by figuring out, okay, so what do we want to learn? What are the key skill sets that you want to learn about? Uh, 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 that you want to learn about? And then you design the task. So if you want to check, uh, for instance, in the office manager, uh, whether they are uh, uh, whether they're good at time management, that's a key skill. Okay, that needs to be addressed in, in the task somehow. So you, you do uh, criteria first, and then uh, then uh, uh, task design. Okay. This is this is uh, this is this is something we borrowed heavily from uh, our uh, my and other, other other team members' time in school. So as a teacher, when you do assessment or make an exam, you you then figure out okay. So if I'm assessing this at the end, uh, these are these these are the lesson objectives that lead up to that exam. To, to build it based on the lesson objectives. Um, share, allow plenty of room for questions. You're not a perfect task designer. You, you might be, but I mean, as, 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 as a founder or as a, as a team lead, you're a generalist. You will make mistakes in your task descriptions. It will be imperfect. Just build some leeway into, into it and um, evaluate. And congratulations, you've already defined the criteria that you're looking for, so that makes the evaluation easier. You don't get an essay and go, oh geez, how do we how do we rate this? We go, okay, we're looking for time management skills here. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you provide feedback. Um, if the task is really, really subpar quality, then we would uh, use this as a filtering stage. If if it's if it's Sort of mediocre to what quality, yeah. It's, 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 we, we, we describe that this is the case and we provide detailed feedback. And again, for, for, for us, if you, if you have the criteria and if you do notes in a spreadsheet, you can just copy and paste and you don't have to write a new email. So uh, make notes every step of the way, save yourself time in providing feedback. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, it's generally led by the team lead. Uh, very often we have two or three eyes looking at the task. So in this case, it was Monero who leads our customer success team and Cynthia who is one of our customer success uh, uh, folks uh, in Google. Um, and what performs well from the candidate side? Well, uh, <laughs> performing well. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you do the task well, that will be appreciated. This is the most technical bit. Uh, and being proactive with communication, so uh, instead of, I didn't understand, again, typical mistake, uh, I didn't understand this section of it, so I didn't do it. Um, yeah, that's, that, that, that one's going to go down bad. If we clearly communicated before that, yeah, group of questions is available to you. Uh, and we have a reasonably high, the thing I'm, I'm quite proud of, we have a reasonably high uh, task submission rate. So if you go to the task, there's there's not a lot of people who disappear uh, because again you've 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 built that up in the previous stages. You've you've garnered that commitment. Uh, yeah. Yes. Do you ch do you check the, the same person as you send uh, this task? Do this task? No. Okay. Um, and again, this is the foundation of that interview. So we will be using the next the next round, which is task and skills. Uh, you have to be uh, if it's a if it's a development task, if it's a coding task, you have to be able to argue for this or that solution. Uh, that's we will cross check you, cross examine you on your delivery. So if you if you sneak if you sneakily submit something, uh, there's there's backup mechanisms. Honestly, you check. Well, uh, yes. Post post submission, we 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 uh, uh, yeah we, we do check. We do check. But I suppose that counts checking. 
I was, I was thinking about the, the fancy webcam solutions and, and, and log in with an hour. We do none of that. Uh, we just talk through the task. Much more low fi uh, yeah, so I was about to ask, so how is this task being delivered to you? Is it sent or, or you have a, a talk about a meeting? Yeah. Uh, That's the next step or? Typically it's sent, uh, it's sent by email, okay. it's uh, answered by email. Yeah, so in most positions it's going to be some sort of a written piece or preparations for a, for a spoken piece. Um, and I, I can go into that more. Uh, in coding, I think we'll be, uh, we don't uh, create a GitHub repository and everything to do that. Um, so, yeah. And approximately how long of time do you can, uh, allow for the task to be? So, you mentioned that three, four hours would be expected for it to take, but is it like a couple of days, a week? Uh, week was standard. Week, week was standard. Uh, we generally would expect that somebody finds time that they haven't fully overbooked weekends, etc., uh, etc. Et if, uh, and again, we go back to the first conversation, if you go, the next thing is the task, you will have a week to do that, it will take about three, four hours. Is next week okay? And they go, yes, you just send it away. Uh, if they go, oh geez, next week I'm traveling, we go, okay, we'll send it to you once you return. So we agree on the task submission date uh, in the first conversation. But yeah. how do you monitor that? Uh, how long did it take for them? Uh, really like three, four hours? And then say on the new was it maybe eight hours or a couple of days? Um, we, again, we ask. Uh, uh, but uh, it's the three, four hours, it should be doable in three, four hours. So we, we don't request um, too much time. If they choose to deliver too much time, we'll, we'll evaluate the final code. Um, some people will be able to achieve it in four, some, some people will be eight, but we'll be mostly speaking about the outcomes and the outcomes of the task rather than the time. Okay. And again, we, we, are, uh, we are not entirely and then this, this again will depend on the situation in your company. You, there will be situations where you want somebody who can react under pressure, somebody who's, 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 who's really able to churn something out in half an hour. If that's what they're meant to be doing in their position, you test for that, you have a task for that. Excellent. Um, next, we have the two interviews. Everybody gets two interviews. Uh, leadership uh, positions, so sort of more senior positions, get can get a third uh, interview. And the first interview is the most standard, which is tasks and skills, uh, which is oriented about the professional experience and uh, uh, of the candidate. Uh, you want to clarify things you've seen in the task. So the task again, uh, you've got some signal there. And there are some things where you don't really know, is, is this signal or is this noise? Is this an accidental error or is this a deep misconception uh, of the candidate? So you want to clarify some things, you've noted down a few questions there. You want to openly discuss any red flags that you've seen. So you've, you've missed the deadline, you haven't communicated that, and there's sort of, uh, it's, 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 it's false telling errors. Uh, I don't know why that would go into the interview, but if that, if that went into the interview, you would go, um, these are the red flags, let's, let's talk through those, is there a good reason why? Uh, and you want to get an idea of how that person thinks about their work and get an idea of the collaboration. So you, we typically start by reviewing the task. Uh, here you see again, next, uh, next tab in the spreadsheet, uh, absolutely illegible, even from here. Um, but it, it, it says, so what do you find easiest, hardest in the task? And we log the candidates' answers. Um, so what, what did you find? Uh, uh, and, then, and then going through task by task. Uh, we have questions prepared, but we split from the plan often. often. We talk shop. You want to talk um, with precise examples with, okay, so this, this thing 
that you, 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 you designed here. So why exactly is it that that's right? So here's, here's another case. So you want to, to have that conversation as practical as possible. And um, yeah, take notes, um, evaluate on, we, we found it helpful to evaluate on Google Scanner, um, the score that Google uses in their hiring process. Uh, how many of you have uh, heard about that? Brilliant, another, uh, another opportunity to share. Uh, uh, Google scale is a scale of one, two, three, and four, one to four. One means I will actively advocate for this person not to come here. Two is uh, mm, leaning towards no, but would not shout. Three, leaning yes, but would not shout. And four is yes, 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 this is, this is the right person. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to take the responsibility that this is, this is the right person for us. Uh, and in general, the evaluation of the one to, uh, one, to, one to four means nobody gets to sit on the fence. Nobody gets to go, hmm, I don't know, you have to lean yes or no. Absence of fours is stressful. Uh, if, if there's nobody that's really enthusiastic about the candidate, you're getting yourself a mediocre candidate. Uh, and uh, anyone going with one, that, oh no, 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 this is, this is a person we would absolutely not work with, uh, is worth a discussion, at least, if not oh, don't auto disqualify. If you've built up a, a, a good team and if you've selected the people in the interview well, a one is, is we, we stopped talking here. Um, who is part of that interview? Typically, two, three people, um, the team lead, who will be managing them, uh, the co-worker uh, from somebody from that team, uh, and potentially somebody absolutely random from a different team, uh, to, to give a sense of explaining stuff to, to beginners, if that's useful in, in that, in that uh, case, uh, or maybe another co-worker. So you want, you want to avoid individual bias, you want to have a diverse group of folks looking at uh, the candidate. Um, and yeah, um, what works well, and again, this is the same as, as education and, and, and doing well academically. Uh, if the candidate has good metacognitive skills, so if they're able to think about their thinking, think about their work. So when you go, why did you design this function that way? If you're not able to think about why you made those decisions and explain that, that will play against you. So if you've made really, really good choices that you're not able to sort of explain how you thought, um, that's that's uh, sort of suboptimal. So you want to be uh, you want to be able to talk about your work and think about your work and think about how you think about your work uh, in in a uh, reasonable fashion. Uh, and openness and a good narrative. So uh, again. Uh, this is uh, any 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 kind of converse. There's, there's a lot of storytelling in there. So uh, so a good narrative of yeah yeah I this is my next step up and I've done similar things there and here's 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 a comparison I can make with my previous workplace. That's great. Rushing through to interview number two, culture, the other huge pillar uh, that we also check through uh, through uh, um, through an interview. Culture eats everything else for breakfast. And this is this is so true for a small company. You again, if you are building a company of whatever culture that you prefer, of brilliant jerks, of really sort of collaborative people, uh, if whatever that uh, that profile is, you you know that people will collaborate more and better if you if you screen for that and. We identify traits, so being able to learn from your mistakes, talk openly about them, uh, challenge authority. You, you identify the traits that are meaningful for your culture. And, uh, well, in, in, the, in the purest and most simple form, you ask for examples. You go, hey, um, can you tell me about the time where you've provided quality feedback to a coworker and what changed? 
can you tell me about the time when you exhibited this or that? Is, is, is the most powerful form of question in project use. Uh, have you exhibited these values and have been in accordance with them before? Tell me about that. Uh, so that's, uh, that's, again, Google's here afterwards. We take notes. We model culture, so as the founders, this, this, is, this is something that we're, we're, we're privileged to be small enough that founders can be part of every, uh, uh, in every culture interview. Um, so we model culture by, by being open, by doing whatever it is that your company stands for. Uh, and uh, yeah, culture match. Uh, for, us, for us, it's uh, openness, transparency, uh, ambition, etc., etc. So whatever whatever your uh, whatever your culture match is, that's uh, that, that, that will perform well. And there's no point faking it because if you're if you're this far, if you fake uh, or pretend or try to figure out desirable answers, um, if not in this interview, uh, it will become apparent soon enough, and will will again you're setting yourself up for. Uh, future, future failure. And for all the uh, case study, uh, case study, uh, marketing manager uh, had noted in his CV that we can quiz him on Star Wars trivia. I think, <laughs> I think Ernest spent more time on preparing a quiz on Star Wars trivia than <laughs> uh, uh, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and the, the first key question, which was, I think, uh, about lightsaber stances. Um, the first key question, they, they passed with my colors, um, and, and, and that's a conversation you can have, yeah. Uh, but we, we don't require that, that's not a requirement, that's just, uh, if, if, if you give us a little finger, we'll take it. Um, so yeah, um, and finally, uh, we have the strategy interview. Uh, that's if we have more time with four questions. I'm, I'm already slightly late. Uh, we'll go into that. And finally, it's the decision meeting. Uh, no strategy for this one. Uh, you want everybody who's been part of looking at tasks, interviews, interview one, interview two. You want everybody in the same room. You want to look through their, your notes before, you want to look at your Google score, uh, scale ratings, and uh, if you've been consistently good throughout, uh, that's, that's a really, really strong plus for you. So that's the, the final, uh, so after the second interview, we go to the decision meeting, that's typically 15 minutes per hand, uh, and sometimes less. Uh, and that's our hiring process. Uh, yeah, we are <laughs> plug. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll just I'll just put this on the screen a bit longer. I think you are in the wrong uh, auditorium. You don't do the tasks. Four, 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 four people raise their hands uh, as, as looking for uh, looking for for prospects. So jackpot. Uh, but but no. Uh, uh, Romans are sitting uh, are sitting over there. Uh, 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 so to speak to him as well. Um, things I did not speak about, um, but I wish I could. I left on the cutting room uh, floor. Uh, what did the process look like when we had not 33 people as we have now, uh, but 3 to 8, 16? Uh, when's the right time to formalize something? Because now this is formal. We do this for every position. Uh, there will be exceptions when you know you skip a step because you don't want an introductory call for a person you've known for four years. Uh, but but that's, that's there. Rolling versus campaign recruitment. Do you want to have positions open constantly or do a focused campaign to look for somebody? Uh, high attracting ca candidates, help designing a task uh, for a piece of work that you don't understand. We were now building a marketing team. None of us is marketers. <laughs> Uh, so you want a test for something you have no idea how to do well. Magnificent intellectual challenge. Uh, and uh, then uh, COVID and Hiring International, we, we currently have about five, six folks in, in, in the United Kingdom. Uh, and we're opening, opening our, our hiring prospects 
prospect. Uh, and that's been a fun ride as well. Uh, so yeah, those are the things I did not speak about. But if you have any questions, uh, feel free. And if we still have some time for questions. Excellent. You ask for particular people and allow the candidate to provide others themselves. So you would ask, you would ask for one person, and you would then uh, allow the candidate to uh, to provide one more. Um, why it happens after the interviews? Why it's quite late? You want to be pretty sure that uh, this is this is this is this is this is a candidate that you can encourage to speak to their current boss and, and say, you know, I'm, I'm working around, uh, it's offered, but can you provide a reference for me? Uh, so it's, it's very late, so you have to have very high sensitivity. And the key things from reference polls, uh, the why is less as a filter and more on, okay, we've hired this person, let's assume it's a positive decision, what do we do to get get, get it started right? Are they a deadline person? How uh, flexible are they with, with their goals? So you want to figure out how to do the best onboarding for that person in the reference calls. So you're not looking for anything that can disqualify It has to be a really bad reference. Oh, yeah. uh, it has to be a really bad reference, or it has to resonate with a few sort of OGs oh, uh, we, 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 we heard him say that, and that, and that. We heard her to avoid that question. Oh, there's something dark in their past. Uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's part ways while we can. Uh, so it's very, very rare to be disqualified by somebody or make a decision based on the reference call. The reference call is generally uh, built for better onboarding rather than for uh, info. But the info, it, it, we've had one or two cases like that. Thanks. Yeah. Who would you trust more uh, in the reference call? Uh, candidate or people you are calling or emailing? Because sometimes uh, they split parts like in bad ways and uh, the, the truth is in the middle. I would not be speaking from experience. I've never had two unfathomably different narratives collide at that point. Um, in general, um, in general, candidates, in general, the references are positive. It's, it's, it's tougher to figure out how to how to get them to say something nasty about the candidate uh, if they split ways. Um, not amicably. So if somebody got fired and they haven't mentioned that in the interview, or they haven't, at, then there's, there's been no, 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 no talk about getting fired. Um, I, my gut feeling is, is, is saying if somebody feels like they're fired them and they haven't even alluded to that in the interview, something's been wrong with the interview process. We, we are, we are, you, you better give us a good reason to proceed. Uh, but this is this is an abstract response we have in those situations. What has been the biggest fuck up for you so far in Thailand and what did you learn? <laughs> um, uh, excellent. Uh, I think the biggest fuck ups are the slow burners. The biggest fuck ups are where you make a misfire. Uh, and you're so invested in making it work that you spend years and years in making it work and it doesn't work. Um, uh, we've had situations uh, that, we were, that we've discussed with the, with, the, uh, with the folks themselves, so I feel sort of quite pleased to share that with you. We've had situations where we hired somebody to be our uh, research teams manager. They were a, a good educationalist. Uh, they had no management experience. 
And we really, really want to make that work because they're such a good education expert. I mean, they understand how schools work, etc. And then you realize with six, six months in or three months in, you go, okay, what they're doing day to day is project management. They're not doing education research and they're not writing about that. They're doing project management. We didn't test for that, we didn't hire for that. We, we, we imagine that research is, is something magical. And then you try to make it work and you adapt the role, et cetera, and you, you then don't find that fit. Uh, and then, then sort of you go, okay, now, 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 now we part ways. And they go, okay, yeah. Uh, and you've spent a lot of resource and you've delayed hiring. Uh, so so it's, it's, it's not a sort of immediate, uh, uh, urgent fit. It's, it's a sort of quagmire more than anything. Uh, if you get stuck in a, in a, in a bog with, with a mishire. Uh, so what we've learned from that is um, be more critical in the first um, in the first weeks of the candidate because with the problem you you, you you can't get it right. You can't get it right. Be really careful in, 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 in the in the first uh, months um, for signs that you may be made this higher. Um, and feel free to explain that and, and, and make that decision part ways um, uh, with boys. Yeah, that's that's the big lesson. I burnt out last year uh, in June, June, July. Uh, that was a those were bad months. Uh, those were really bad months. So uh, generally, what we learned about it, uh, uh, a few things. One is important to rest, um, uh, and that means uh, if you have a period of crunch, if you if you if you pull a few all items, etc. That's okay, that doesn't cause burnout, provided you get immediate rest. So if, if that is a prolonged sort of uh, uh, case of crunch, that's when it hits you. Uh, it's not just about working hours, it's about sense of control, uh, it's about uh, being uh, sort of aware. So, so what we're doing is, is, in general in the company, uh, making sure people are nudged towards rest after really intense periods, even if they don't naturally gravitate towards that, you you, you, you push them somewhat. Uh, and uh, you just, yeah, you try and pick up the, the key and the key patterns the, uh, in one of what's. Uh, one of what's is, is, is a sort of key, uh, key thing that how our, our, our company operates. So, Every team lead will have a one on one with everyone on their team every two weeks, two, three weeks. Uh, and, and, and that's where you ask about well being and, and, and sort of try and catch those signs. Signs are uh, being uh, exhaustion, cynicism, and uh, low self efficacy. So you constantly feel tired, you, uh, you think this is, this is all for nothing. Fucking customers. Uh, and and, 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 and self-efficacy self 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 is, is over my work is garbage, uh, even if it isn't. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, we've, we've had that experience and we're trying to steer further away from that. How do you train your colleagues uh, for hiring? And uh, especially, I have seen that sometimes uh, I do uh, kind of test if they do correctly because I have seen that some people have, how to say, high self-esteem and are insulting their candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, again, not from experience on, on the on the on the on the, the self-esteem and insulting candidates, uh, hopefully. Uh, uh, so the key uh, key thing there for the interviews is always have multiple people in the room. I think that's that's the safety net you have uh, where Okay, one of them is the team maker. One of them is going to be one of the decision maker, but you don't have uh, to hire other people. Uh, and uh, tra training, training coworkers, training on interviews is something we're not doing yet. Uh, we formalized the process. Uh, 
it's something we should start doing. And this is, as, as, as all, all those of you with, with the startups, I know that should, the should do list is, is a magnificent thing where, uh, where, where, where ideas go to die. Uh, uh, but uh, I think by exposing them to our interview practice as the second member or the third member, so uh, our head of sales is, is currently running sales recruitment, but before he did that, he was the second the observer, the, the random person pulled in uh, for, for other uh, positions. So uh, osmosis currently, but um, we might be formalizing that uh, in half a year, nine months. Yeah. Was this process that you presented tonight conceptually created? Or no. did you organically evolve? Uh, very, very organic, very organic. Uh, How long was that? Uh, well, we're now seven years old. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so I think seven years is, 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 is the thing. Uh, key milestones were um, around 2016 when we started hiring, hiring a lot. We introduced tasks for every. Uh, uh, so, so tasks came in, in, into being then. And we polished those since. Uh, we made a switch with the interviews coming after the task and being task influenced around. No, I, I can't recall, a uh, couple, couple of years back. Uh, and what's, what's been the, the, the important thing that we started doing, uh, thanks to Agnes, who's, who's, who's leading our operations team, we started doing a couple of years back, thanks to my third initiative, is uh, effectively saying, team leaders, you don't have to be that. So this is, this is now how we do things, uh, is, is, is formalizing it and, and, and helping uh, to bring in those uh, sort of pieces of best practice from all teams into into we do this we do it this way now we can help you. Um, I, I think that's that's been that's been the uh, the shift towards formalization. What's your current attitude uh, when you're hiring for uh, roles which are maybe a bit harder to come by, like maybe uh, technical people or some specific maybe. Uh, more senior people, so are you willing to sacrifice some parts in, in the interview process, or you just can stick to it and even if the deal falls is not coming in, then you just try to kind of get more leads instead? That problem is not here, it's, 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 it's above that in the funnel, right? So um, it's like here you never change anything, you just try to kind of wind the funnel. No, no, there's, 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 again, there's a lot of exceptions. You, you know a person, they come with, with that the previous manager has already recommended that you don't go up for do a formal phone call. Uh, so, so if you have that bit of information, you skip that stage. That's that's the reason why. Uh, if somebody uh, goes, I've got another offer. I need a decision uh, on Tuesday. Uh, we will attempt to expedite this. We will go. Okay. In that case, tasks. Can you do that? Great. Uh, interviews, let's, let's book them back to back. Uh, we try and, and, and be accommodate for tight timelines whilst keeping the person there. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's our approach here, but uh, 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 finding candidates that are, 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 are suitable, that's a whole, whole, whole different story uh, uh, about uh, marketing, employer branding. Networking, building connections, uh, keeping in touch, tracking previous applicants, and I go on and on and on. Uh, and, uh, and that and that one we have this this one seems to be working reasonably well for us. Uh, this one I'm proud to say is good. Uh, uh, attracting candidates, work in progress. Uh, we are we're not excellent at that, but uh, getting better. Do you have a kind of specific quota of how many people have to go through the process in order to make a decision? No. Or it can be just one, I don't think it makes sense. To... Uh, it can be just one, uh, and that uh, that makes those decision meetings longer because saying no to your only candidate is tough. Uh, 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 we, we had that on last Monday where, where, where we had two candidates 
because one accepted a different role uh, and, and the other one we said no to. Uh, and that was, that was a difficult no to say. Uh, but with, the, with hiring, same as, as, as with investment, uh, attracting investment, it's better to do it from a position of strength to from a position of, okay, we can afford to say no. We don't need a marketing manager just yet. We can keep looking until we find the perfect fit. Uh, and, and that, yeah, so uh, uh, we are privileged to be in that position.